to something. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I like that new set over there. <laughs> well, just well, just keep talking. Hey, They're having computer problems. You know, this week is the week that will test us to the max. Yes. It's testing us to the max because yesterday was one of those experimental days. <laughs> it went awry. Matt's mic wasn't working. He was singing a song. Nothing worked. So today, my battery is dead. Can I have a battery? Y'all are going to get to meet our cameraman. <laughs> Here, sweetie. Well, let's see. I tell you what, we can talk about what's going to be going on this weekend while y'all are doing that. How's that? Um, Angel Spirit will be at Refuge Baptist Church this weekend on Father's Day. So they wanted to invite everybody to come down for that. They were, hey, y'all. <laughs> she's back. They were actually supposed, supposed to be here this morning, but we didn't quite get everything finalized, so that kind of fell through. So, uh, so today we are doing fill-in. Fill-in. We, we thought Angel Spirit was going to be here. We thought Keith Petty was going to be here. Keith Petty may still be here. Yeah, I, yeah. I haven't heard back from him, but he's... He um, he is a babysitter. He is he is a babysitter in the summer. He is the teacher of extraordinaire mm -hmm. during the year. Everybody he is, loves he is Keith. A, he is an amazing teacher. He was one of Tori's teachers who taught her to learn, to love everything about school. Wow. She really took a lot from him and and took it to college when wow. she went away. So. Um, Keith Petty is a wonderful guy, and we hope he will be with us. It's supposed to be. But anyway, an angel spirit is supposed to be here. So guess what we've been doing? The reason we late and the reason we... We've been sitting out there in the car choosing what you're going to get to see today. And I chose something based on... Today we have two guests <coughs> who will not be with us, but I'm going to show you a little hint of they really will be with us. They will be with us from 1950. Now, this is a couple who has been instrumental in the success of this program because one of the people shown in this photo from 1950 has been instrumental in helping me find guests. She works the basin, she works the Ducktown area, she works Fayetteville County. She has sent me some really, really good guests from that area. Now this photo was taken in 1950 of she and her soon-to-be husband, I figured up the timing on this bad boy. She was 16 years old, evidently, because it was 1950, so there you go. But this couple has been instrumental in making me uh, a better me, mm -hmm. a better me. They both still very active in the community. The gentleman in this photo still works. Now, he's 80 one years young and the sweetheart a sweetheart and he still works and today we're going to talk about the um, mill village where they met where they lived her father was a preacher mm -hmm. and he was a very very popular preacher he was like the preacher everybody wanted for revivals and they really really paid attention mm -hmm. to what um, Reverend Millsap said. So it is going to be, today is going to be a day that we honor another couple too. Um, I want to show a photo. This is Aunt Betty and Uncle Shorty last year, one year ago, last week. They were with us traveling with the diplomats. We were on the motorhome. We were having a great, great time. They have celebrated about 50 years of successful, great, happy marriage. Um, as many of you know, Miss Betty is in the fight of her life. She is now um, in the bed most of the time. She is resting comfortably. Your prayers have been a lot to that family. Here's, here's a close up. Now this is Shorty about to take a bite of that good old barbecue. That was the week that you'd have thought I had a trough set up in the motor home. It was like everybody was eating. This was a meeting and greeting kind of day. But um, right now, I just want to tell you that your prayers have meant a lot to this family. And now, today we're going we're gonna to honor couples. Here's another young couple from Ball Ground. Um, it is funny, but we all look back and think about would our lives have been better if this had happened, if that had happened. I bet these couples look back and say, wow, we're so glad we spent 20 years, 25 years, 50 years together. I think this is what works. Now, Charlene, you've spent... 20 years with Charles? Yes, 20 wonderful years. A very, years. I started to say, a very good 20 years. Yes, best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah, yep. and, and quite often we look back on our life and if it wasn't perfect, then um, sometimes we're given an opportunity to start over. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's a good thing, that's a good thing. Papa Jack and Joyce never had to start over because they got it right the first time. We're gonna talk a little bit about the Adco Village. This magazine is compliments of a, uh, somebody I met yesterday 
in the state of Alabama. Mm -hmm. They had this magazine. Mm -hmm. And I said, what, what are the odds of me walking in and picking up a magazine in the state of Alabama featuring two of my dearest friends. It's funny because we were out in the car and she told me I never could find their picture and I had no idea it was 50 years ago or 40 years ago. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Actually, 50, it was 60 years, 60 years ago. 60 years ago this photo was taken. So there you go. Papa Jack and Joyce. They are a big part of um, the community in the Fannin County area. They are involved in Harbor Ministries. They are involved in the First Baptist Church, McKaysville. They're involved in everything, and I think when we look at their life, we kind of think they got it right. They mm -hmm. got it right. They have helped the community. They have helped each other. They have been good to each other. They have um, they have done a lot for other people, and I think it comes back to them 10,000 times. Mm -hmm. I, I think it comes back to them 10,000 times. We also have some, some other things we're going to show today. Now, I don't know if the photos have come in yet, but we sent in some photos. Do you know what noodling is? Noodling. Noodling. Yeah. No, well, I, did, not. I didn't either. I didn't either until this weekend when I was introduced to a huge, huge pile of catfish that some gentleman from Ludville, <coughs> and you might be a redneck if, <laughs> might apply to this because I never saw a bunch of grown men do this. But they do this, and it, it somehow they come out with catfish out from under the docks without lines and hooks. So our oh. first guest is a professional fisherman and he talks about the fact that he does fish with a rod and a pole and a sinker and a hook and the worms and the whole bit. Mm -hmm. Well these guys that taught me a little bit about real fishing this weekend. They get down in the water. I don't quite get the concept I've seen yet. this on TV before. Well, okay. I've seen it up personal this weekend. We've seen this fish coming out of here and I'm thinking you stuck your arm where Her? to do what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so anything you've seen on television is nothing compared to what you can see if you take a weekend day trip with us because we <laughs> have seen it all now. Um, I certainly wish Shade had been with us mm -hmm. because these fish, there was a variety from like this to 35 pounds. Oh, wow. Now, a 35 pound catfish is probably the ugliest thing you ever saw in your mm -hmm. life. With it a was, mouth this big. It was ugly. They turned back the flathead mud cats, I think that's what they said. Anyway, anyway, so. Last night about 11 o'clock my phone rings and it's my child and who is also an avid fisherman. And he says, Mom, I've just come up to Carter's. I'm on the dock. I think I have the world record breaking fish that's ever been caught in Carter's. Mom, you can't believe this. You won't believe how big this fish is. How do I get in touch with the game warden? Okay, it's 11 o'clock at night. I don't know how to get in touch with the game warden. <laughs> I guess he thinks because I've seen noodling in his reality. You know everything. I, I know everything about fishing. <laughs> Today we're going to honor Guys, this is the week of Father's Day. We're going to honor you fisher men and you fisher women who really like to fish. So we're going to start today's program after we go to our breaks and our sponsors. We're going to go to Ken Freeman. He was the man who organized the event that Nick got, he was honored to fish in last week up in Illinois. It um, had terminally ill children there. Nick got to meet a kid or a couple of kids that were on their boat. He said, Mom, I never saw a smile that big over anything, much less just a fish. Yeah. It was just a fish, Mom. But um, it was an amazing lesson for my child. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank Ken Freeman for doing this. He, you know, the fishermen spend the money to get there. They spend the money for their boats for the gas. But Ken puts together this event. Wow. And it features terminally ill children. So we're going to go to our sponsors. We're going to go to a break. Now, before we do that, have you got something going on really big this weekend with the Joy Masters? No. Are they going to be in Canton? Uh, well, they're going to be, a, yeah, Saturday night, Hickory Flat Fellowship at 7 right. o'clock. Yes. That is within our viewing area. That is close to us. Mm -hmm. That is not far from Ball Ground. Get in your cars and go see them. And Glory Bound will be there, too. And Glory Bound mm -hmm. will be there. Um, we will, if, if everything works as planned, we will be in Asheville, North Carolina. Not at the Biltmore House. At a campsite. So. Oh. Oh, fun. <laughs> I'm taking after my daughters. <laughs> yeah, right. My camping is going to be the Holiday Inn. <laughs> the Holiday Inn. 
Well, we're gonna go right now to our sponsors. And remember, Dr. Kent has been found. She was missing in action. She is now found. She is at 572 Maddox Drive. Go by and get to know this wonderful doctor who will be back with us in the near future. And tomorrow's program normally would have doctors on it. We've preempted them to move them up a month. It's vacation time. and. I had already scheduled somebody that I think it's going to take a long, long time to tell his story. And we're going to have a counselor here with him and um, let her give her take on why would a child at 14 leave and ride his bicycle 550 mm -hmm. miles and never look back. Mm -hmm. So um, what could possibly have been that bad? Wow. What could have possibly turned him to walk away from his family at 14 years old, but he did that. And he today has successfully been married for over 60 years. His bride will be with him tomorrow. So today I just thought we should honor some couples. Your mom and dad are a couple yeah, that will be 50 years. 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, there are many, many success stories out there. There are many failure stories. There are many stories that you thought you met Prince Charming and he turned out to be a werewolf, yeah. you know. There are many stories that um, it didn't quite work, but later in life you met somebody that it did work. Mm -hmm. And so there are some great success stories out there. Papa Jack and Joyce happen to be one of my favorite success stories. Right now we're gonna go to our sponsors. We're gonna go to the community calendar, and then when we come back, we're gonna go to Ken Freeman. This was, this was done in April of last year. At that time, my child was a race car driver. He had not given up racing because um, he was still racing weekly. And then he got the fishing bug. Now let me tell you something, ladies. If you want to go to a good Macy's sale, buy your husband a fishing pole and get him hooked. He will be gone and you can head to Macy's to the big <laughs> sale. <laughs> so for Father's Day, here's my, here's my gift suggestion. Buy him a fishing pole and get him hooked on fishing. It is a great way to spend time. He might fish in a tournament and win you a lot of money. He might fish in a tournament and spend, and, and spend a lot of money getting to the tournament <laughs> too because we've seen a little bit of that. But um, it is Father's Day. Find something to do with your father possibly. Yeah. Um, I'm not a fisher person, but I will tell you, I have seen, I think there's about 160 pounds of catfish this weekend. That's wow. a lot of catfish. And uh, I know now what noodling is. I know that it takes some wild and crazy men sticking their arms down in something and jerking those fish out. No, Yuck! I couldn't do that. Right now, <laughs> let's go to our sponsors. And when we come back, you're going to get to... Um, Meet once again Ken Freeman, a man who um, quite possibly has, um, he's turned the fishing world around because he makes these pro fishermen, he brings them to tears when he sets them up with a terminally ill child on his tournaments once a year. We'll be back in just a minute. We're back, y'all. This has been a strange day. Yes. We, we came in, we got here at 810, but I had some things to do in the car, and I was on the phone and doing this and doing that. And we ran in here late, and if y'all could have seen, I never, ever leave my house without lipstick on. <laughs> never. I am sitting here on the set when we realize, there ain't no lipstick on these mouths. <laughs> I'm going, ah! So Charlene, we have to get Nathan to run over and get your lipstick. <laughs> this has been one of those mornings. So anything that happens today, we're ready for it. We're ready for it's it. It's live. Who cares? It's live. <laughs> and, and we are going to deal with it. Yesterday, <clears throat> and it's very strange, I was sitting in a place in Alabama. And I pick up this magazine and I begin reading an article. ATCO began with 40 homes, expanded to 291. <clears throat> when Ohio manufacturer E.L. McLean built his American Textiles Company on a 400-acre site near Cartersville, Georgia. In 1904, he also built a 40-house village for his white workers. The village came to be known as ATCO, with a capital A, while the mill itself went, went by ATCO, all four caps. The construction on what was described as prime farmland marketed a turning point in the industrialization of Bartow County and of the new way of life for generations of area families. The expansion was ready, and by 1917, the mill was cranking out cotton cloth for horse collar pads with a workforce of 350 men and women. Now, guys, think about it. In 1917, 350 people working was a, lot, a large workforce, most of whom lived in the village. By then, 110 houses had been built, attended the village churches and sent their children to the village school. ATCO had a sense, uh, had its own sense of community where people gathered to work, live, and play. Now this is where, and, and y'all have heard us talk about ATCO, so you wondered what is ATCO? Bill Senyard grew up in the ATCO village. Oh, I didn't know His that. His family still lives over there. This expanded to include um, over 200 houses, and with other mills, 
As with other mills, the management of American Textiles realized the importance of the self-contained village. It allowed management basically to control uh, nearly every aspect of the employee's life yet promoted loyalty to the company. The store was leased. Now they had a company store. The store was leased in 1905. Um, it was operated until the 1940s. Payment could be in cash or trade items such as butter, eggs, and produce. When Goodyear bought the property in 1929, Atco Village be be became the only southern Goodyear mill to have a company store. The company started issuing coupon books that workers could use at the store for purchases. This is today at Go Village. Many people still live there. And I think there's a photo here um, of a home. I want to show this. This home, actually the folks ended up paying, I think about, uh, the houses were between $1,250 and $5,500. And later, some of the families were offered an opportunity to buy these homes, and they sold for as much as $17,000. But think about it, $17,000 today wouldn't buy you a used car. So, unless you got it on Craigslist and had a problem, no. <gasps> Can't believe I said that. But, but it, is, it is one of those things, you could buy a home for $17,000 from the village many, many years later, but most of these people had lived in these homes up to 40 years. And um, it is, see that little white house? Many of the streets in Cartersville still look like that. Bill's parents still live over at the Adco Village. So, uh, over 200 homes, and these are people who were employed by the village. And this magazine, I don't know if y'all have ever subscribed to it, but I wanna recommend it. <clears throat> it is called Past Times. It is the rise and fall of mill life. And here it has stories of many, many mills. And many of these mills were familiar to me because we used to ship yarn from Jasper Yarn Processing to many of these mills. And so I picked up the magazine because I was interested in the mill life. I had no idea that I was going to find a story that included Papa Jack and Joyce Bryson. So um, get a copy of uh, Past Times. I was going to see if I can tell you how to order it. Oh, let's see, uh, da, 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 da. I really can't. Get online and see uh, Past Times, and it is the publisher. I don't know if they're local, I'm not sure, but this is all about North Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, and it, it's a very interesting magazine, and it includes many of the things that have happened in America. Today, the Goodyear plant over in Gadsden, Alabama is one of the largest employers, and it talks about that. And it actually, there's even a Lawson Chevrolet ad in here. So I really? thought that was interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. But anyway, get yourself a copy of Past Times, The Rise and Fall of Mill Life is this edition. And the other edition I picked up was about Coca-Cola. So oh. uh, another large company. Now today we are gonna do some flashbacks. Um, we are going to talk to you about things that Father's Day is approaching. And um, you'll do something special with your dad, won't you? I imagine so. Mm -hmm. You're very lucky to still have your dad. Yeah, happy Father's Day, Daddy. I yeah, love you. Yeah, yeah. And, and a good, good guy. Y'all may just all work together on Sunday. You, you know? never know. <laughs> you never know, you never know. <laughs> now, um, let's talk a little bit about canning because one of the places I've always bought canning supplies you is the Blue Star. You want me to talk about canning? <laughs> yeah, I want you to say <laughs> what hey. all them canning jars are on at the Blue all Star. All one. <laughs> all <laughs> one. Because if you have gardens like Dawn does, she's getting too many cucumbers mm -hmm. at one time. You can't possibly eat enough cucumber sandwiches. Right. You I love can't. Cucumber sandwiches. I do too. Blue plat mayonnaise. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. But if you're going to can, the Blue Star does have all the canning supplies you need. So go by and check them out. Mm -hmm. um, if your husband is an avid fisherman, go fishing with him on Father's Day. Yeah, you know, do something good. that maybe you might not enjoy on a normal day but do something that he would enjoy. So if he's an avid fisherman, right now we're gonna reintroduce you to Ken Freeman. He's a professional, he's a, he's a big to-do with the Bass Pro Shops. He's a big to-do with a lot of fishing world. Um, and, and he is, um, he's a very special man who has an eight-year-old child who has huge medical disabilities. So I think that's what gave Ken the idea mm -hmm. to do this fishing tournament. Um, if you've ever been around a terminally ill child, it's pretty tough to take. Mm -hmm. But to know that you are giving a terminally ill child an opportunity to do something they've never done, um, I say thank you, thank you, thank you to Ken Freeman because these kids, <coughs> Nick came back with this huge smile because he made a difference in somebody's life. So um, yeah, it, it's a good thing. Right now we're gonna go to an interview we did with Ken Freeman, it's about a year ago. And he's gonna explain a little bit about noodling. Maybe he can explain it better than I can. It just looked to me like a bunch of rednecks out there in the mud. <laughs> 
time, but I'm going to tell you something. That bank was covered up with catfish, and we hope to have the pictures for you shortly. Right now, let's go to Ken Freeman as he tells you just a little bit more about fishing. Is that the one that kind of gets a bad rap? Well, not in my book. It's never mm -hmm. got a bad rap in my book. I like farmed book. catfish. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we do too. I actually do the spokesperson work for the U.S. Farm Race Catfish down in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. But uh, we like just catfish in general. And mm -hmm. we've been uh, doing a lot of work with catfish, as you know, and kind of went to the forefront with catfish tournaments. Of course, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of ironic. Is you it know, called the Big Cat Quest? The Bass Pro Big Cat Quest, that's correct. And, uh, of course, the World Championship of Catfishing, the WCC in Pickwick, actually is the oldest tournament for fishing in the United States of America. It dates back to 1929. So, wow. actually, catfishing has been around for quite a while. Do you know the story of when we brought two fish back from one of your tournaments in one cooler and we went over to a park and we were going to release them for children to get to catch them again? And we asked this big, huge black man who was working out, and, I mean, he looked like, Godzilla, this big guy with these big muscles. And little bitty wormy Lonnie says, can you help me unload these two fish? These two fish. And that guy looks at him like, you need help with two fish? Well, these two fish weighed about 100 pounds. Oh, and he'd oh, no. caught them at your tournaments yeah. and wow. brought them home and put them in the pond so kids could catch them. Now, now do, you, do you only catch with a pole or do you go and do that? We are strictly rod. People call it different yeah. things, noodling or, you Strictly know. rod and rod and reel means only. But do you course, do that for fun? We do, absolutely. You know, I you mean, You would stick your hand in a hole in a fish's no, mouth? No, I would with a rod and reel for fun. Okay. No, no, no grabbling, okay. no, none of those things. That's I, scary. All my fingers and all my toes. You know, my niece does that. Yeah, well, she's, she's pulled one out. She's certifiable. You know. <laughs> oh you can get papers God. on her if you want to. Yeah. There's yeah. a nice place for people like that. Yeah, not me. Well, okay, why did you go? A lot of people are doing bass fishing. Big bass tournaments going on everywhere. You chose the catfish. Why? Well, I grew up in it. My father and I fished the derby. Uh, when I was eight years old, we won the world championship of catfishing. I came back and uh, had the privilege throughout the years. I, I've been chasing catfish tournaments for many years. Uh, I had the privilege of fishing with Clifton Crutcher, a world champion from Nashville. Uh, Snuffy Smith, my mentor, 73, he's a past world champion. Mm -hmm. And then I came back and won the world championship on my own. Uh, later I bought it and then we started the tournament chair. And now I don't get to fish that much. Mm -hmm. I have to. Uh, put up with people What's the like weight Lonnie. on a world champion? Well, the world record fish now is 128 pounds by a mm -hmm. guy named Tim Pruitt. A catfish? And, uh, he's actually up in Illinois. Funny story about Tim. Tim was off on sick leave from Winchester, caught this fish, wasn't supposed to lift anything over five pounds. Oh. Next, next morning he's on every paper in the United States holding this 128 pound fish. Oh, so my gosh. he had to explain a little bit to Winchester uh -huh. ammunition, but he got it worked out. Uh -huh. yeah. wow. You know the story of Lonnie catching that huge fish that he released? Lonnie caught a huge fish down in Alabama, I understand. That I have the picture of. Yeah, that's great. Uh -huh. uh, we really, the days of like you were talking about when the anglers used to haul the fish around stuff, we have really changed. We have an organization called the World Association of Catfishing. That's who's hosting this tournament coming up uh -huh. in Rome. And uh, really, we are dedicated <laughs> to the education, conservation, and preservation of catfishing. And one of the first things we did was a guy named Bill Dance, a lot of people know, mm -hmm. uh, that I work very closely I with. I actually met him at your tournament up you in Pickwick. Yeah. Clarksville. Yeah. In Pickwick, too. That's right. And uh, we actually passed a bill called the Catfish Bill. And this is a protection law that Tennessee was the leader in the United States on doing that says you can only have one 34-inch or larger fish a day. And uh, that's it. That's the limit. And it keeps commercial fishermen from taking only but one. Mm -hmm. um, and then Virginia's followed suit. Now Alabama. I understand uh, Georgia's looking at some similar things to do. Kentucky, Arkansas. And it's really making a difference. We saw a 103-pounder on a Saturday and a 108-pounder on a Sunday caught in the tournament. And if you'd said two century mark fishes would have been caught in one tournament, I would have said, you're nuts. Mm -hmm, but uh, mm -hmm. in fact, I was still on the stage on my television show. And when the 103 pounder came out, I said, it'll be probably 15 years before we see anything like this. So it only took 23 hours. <laughs> oh you my know, gosh. so you never know. <clears throat> okay, tell me where the location is in Rome. Rome, Georgia will be at the Ridge Ferry Park. And it's a great day. I mean, even for you non fishermen, uh, they have an event called Water Fest that's going on over there. They do canoe tug of wars, kayak tug of wars. Um, I'll have the world's largest mobile fish tank over there. Is it in that there. river? What's the name of the river? No, they actually set up a 
it's like a giant swimming pool they do these okay. things in okay. and uh, it's clean neat no no rivers the um, Coosa and of course Wise Lakes where the guys will be fishing uh, if you come down they'll be weighing in around three o'clock and hey this tournament year is a WAC series it's not our pro series you mm -hmm, know mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of pros and uh, Lonnie. Oh, we've got a mic problem take that mic how oh, lately we've had a lot of mic Lord, Lord. <laughs> okay. how much of his conversation did we lose <laughs> that's okay I, I'm long winded uh, okay I'll so, it so let's Go uh, back again. <laughs> Rome, Georgia, at Ridge Ferry Park. The cool thing about this, this is a amateur series WAC tournament, World Association of Catfishing. And if you have ever loved to fish, uh, it only costs $29 a year to join. Uh, we're going to be signing up members Friday from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. at Ridge Ferry Park. Mm -hmm. And once you become a member, you get to fish this tournament for free mm -hmm. and you also get to fish two other tournaments this year and this tournament's going to be a unique tournament and it's going to pay back $3,500 guaranteed uh, it's going to have a top ladies spot so if your team has a lady on it a uh, top youth spot for 17 years younger mm -hmm. um, and then we see a lot of that out of uh, your grandson mm -hmm. that fishes David a lot with loves us. To fish. Uh, he gets in trouble at school <laughs> sometimes I hear from Mrs. School to he go fishing. He wants to go fishing and, and I said it's hard to explain to him. Yeah, you've got to be sitting in class concentrating when you, and, and he just wants to do his work and get out of there because he is an avid fisherman. He loves to fish. I never will forget one of my favorite times is David, when he first started coming, came over to my RV that I have set up and he came in and he just had to have something from dance, had to have something from dance, uh -huh, of course. Uh -huh. I'd seen Bill game a hat and then he got that hat, then he wouldn't wear it. He went put it like on a oh, bronze yeah. statue. Oh, yes. Yeah, he wouldn't oh, yes. touch that. Yeah. But, the tournament will take place Saturday. You can fish. You must launch your boat in Cherokee or Floyd County. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, once you join the WAC, you'll get your newsletters. You'll get all the cool information. We'll keep you up to date on all the catfish laws. We'll keep you up to date on all the tournaments, pictures, all the things going on in catfishing. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you'll get your hat and all your little mm -hmm. membership goodies. Mm -hmm. And then you get to fish these tournaments for free. Mm -hmm. And the best deal in the United States. In right. recession times, how cool is free? Right. And and we want to talk about Lonnie and Don Grover and practice in the Coosa all the time. And the fish that they brought over to Jasper came from the Coosa. They just fished in Rome and then they brought them in a tank. Now you haul a tank around. Well, I have the world's largest they mobile they tank. They practice fishing and well. a lot of times they eat. Have you ever gone to their house to eat catfish and hush puppies? They like that. You though. better like catfish and hush puppies. How do you keep a tank from sloshing that's that well, big? Well, the first thing is you don't move it with water in it. It has to be empty. It's a lot of okay. work involved in it. Okay. But if you ever wanted to see an aquatic setting for the world's largest tank, we're going to have it set up down in Rome this weekend as well. So you can mm -hmm. come down Saturday. Uh, the Department of Wildlife Services there in for Georgia, uh, they go out and they shock some different varieties and different kinds of fish up and they'll be on display in that tank and you get up close and personal and mm -hmm. check them out. I'm it's still thinking time. about the ladies and the $3,500 after tax day. You and I both should go. Yeah. <laughs> we might go fishing. <laughs> hey, now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. We're, We'll book a room for you. We need to do that. Yeah, let's let's. We have about. a motorhome and a driver. Yeah, and a yeah, we do have a driver. Let's talk about. They did play a trick on me. At your first tournament, I had been hearing about you and hearing about you and hearing about you. I drove a long, long way to get to your tournament. Get there after midnight, and my son-in-law sets me up perfectly because they had rented a little cabin, and they know my idea of traveling is a five-star hotel. Absolutely. So, that's camping for That's you. camping or a motor for home. me. Or a motorhome. Mm -hmm. A really nice motorhome. So they booked me. They tell me, they said, Mom, we finally got your place. The place is packed. And and being quiet, quiet, shy, Lonnie Fountain, they drive me down this little dirt road. He pulls into a house with no windows, no doors, obviously no electricity. It was like a post-war, <laughs> like was, a Civil War It was house. terrible. Yeah. And he is so quiet. But all of a sudden, you see this big grin come on his face. And it is me looking straight ahead at this place they said they booked me and i just about had a hissy fit i said i'm well they you didn't i didn't tell you the rest or they had already taken me to one place that i said absolutely not i cannot stay here <laughs> i ended up in a five-star really really nice hotel near where you were fishing so yes you did so and i that's where i met bill dance and, and i learned a little bit more about
I look back at what I thought was a living, I'm amazed at the price I chose to pay. And to think I ignored would really matter, cause I thought the sacrifice would be too great. But when I finally reached the point of giving in, I found the cross was calling even then And even though it took dying to survive I've never felt so much alive For I am crucified with Christ And yet I live We're back. Now <laughs> we're back. That was about a year ago, and uh, that's when Nick was introduced to fishing. And I'm so tickled that they've gotten this kid involved in this. Now, everybody, when you face stress, you find something to do to relieve the stress. You mm -hmm. relieve stress by going to the Joy Master Singings. Mm -hmm. I relieve stress by riding in the motorhome and just chilling. Yesterday, I can tell you, I left this set. I went. Mr. Brackett drove over 350 miles yesterday. Wow. So, you know, y'all think I don't get vacations, I get daycations. Vacations. So yesterday I had a daycation and uh, ended up on the back roads of Alabama um, in some places I never thought I'd see. Mm -hmm. Could I get back there? No. Did I enjoy it? Yes. Mm -hmm. I just relaxed and he drove and we had a little bit of rain. We went into an area that had, had a huge storm because trees were down everywhere. But yesterday I had a staycation. I stayed within 350 miles <laughs> home. So uh, quite often when I leave here, y'all never know where I'm going to show up. I never know where I'm going to show up. <laughs> I just sit in the passenger seat and he drives. Um, I'm very lucky mm -hmm. because I can stay on the phone. I can do what I need to do. I can plan today's show. I can whatever, you right. know, I have that time. So um, I feel very fortunate to have that. And and you, with Charles, if, if you're doing business, he drives you to singings. Many times you drive a lot of miles. You went to Piedmont, Alabama last week? Last weekend, yeah. And then we went to Cave Springs this past Sunday. Now, what did you think about the little tiny town of Cave Springs? Oh, I love it. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. Now, there's beautiful. another day trip, guys. And there's a day trip. And antique store. Yes. We didn't stop, but we could see people going back and forth. And uh -huh. Yeah, it was fun. It was beautiful. Now, you've got a prayer request. I do. Miss um, Dimple McGiven has had a heart attack, stents, congestive heart failure, and her daughter asked that we ask everybody to please pray for her. Okay. She watches the show. Now, yesterday I came back and I had about 143 emails, and I'm going through them pretty fast, and I'm just da 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 da. And I find this one from Joel, and I, I read it and I thought, ooh, right on time, right on time. Yes. Can you read this one? I'll try. There are times in life when we all face situations that seem impossible. It's easy to get discouraged and think that things won't ever work out. But the scripture tells us that God goes before us and makes our crooked places straight. In other words, even though you may not have the connections you need right now, you don't have to worry. God is going before you, lining up the right people, arranging the right breaks, and setting up the right opportunities. He is preparing the way for victory. Today, if you are facing difficulty, don't fall into the temptation to get negative and sour. That adversity is not a surprise to God. He's not up in the heavens scratching his head and thinking, oh no, now what am I going to do? No, he already has every day of your life written in his book. Before you had that problem, God already had the solution. He is going before you right now preparing the next chapter of your life. Stay in faith and keep the right attitude because he is moving you forward into the victory he has prepared for you. And the prayer for today is, Father God, thank you for ordering and directing my steps. Thank you for working behind the scenes on my behalf. I choose today to trust in you, knowing that you are good and you always lead me into victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Well, I went through some videos and, and on March 1st last year, I have no idea who I wanted to feature because I was trying to do it in a hurry. So we're going to go to this video from last year. It was March the 1st, and, and I chose it for a reason, and I guess when we see it, we'll know. And then the next one, I think, the next one, I think, does feature Miss Angela Barker. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, at this time, we would like to ask you to continue to pray for her dad. Fred is um, 
at home resting comfortably. He is a um, great guy, great attitude, great smile. Mm -hmm. And they have followed those young grandsons around many a mile to see these kids sing. And, and on the video we're going to show in just a little bit, Angie Barker does a song called Family Chain. Mm -hmm. Each each family that, that tunes in to us every day, there has been a family chain broken. Somebody yes. you absolutely loved is gone. Um, but remember that family chain is really never, never broken. Right. You know, I've had a hard time in the last two weeks. Went to Red Lobster for lunch last week, and, and the last time I was in there, I took my mom there. Really? And we sat, wouldn't you know it, they sit us right across from the table where we sat with Mama. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, she was about six weeks away from leaving here. And she wanted crab legs so bad. Well, I'm sorry, guys. Crab legs are more trouble than they're worth. <laughs> it takes an act of Congress to get into them bad boys, but Mama wanted crab legs. So we take Mama down to Red Lobster, at that point in time, she had had so much chemo, she had no taste buds. Really? And to see my little mama, who was dying to have crab legs, she said, Sugar, it doesn't taste the same. Really? And she said, Sugar, this doesn't, it just isn't right. And I thought, wow. So if you have somebody you love and you need to do something with them, don't put it off until tomorrow. No. Don't wait until tomorrow. I so regret that we didn't take Mama when she first started on chemo because mm -hmm. I didn't know the damage the chemo would do to her. Right. I had no idea. And um, I can remember when we sat in Red Lobster last week and I kept looking over at that table and I thought I can see my little Mama sitting there. Mm -hmm. And um, it was hard because I thought, you know, we waited too long. Don't wait too long to tell somebody you love That's them. Right. Every Don't day. wait too long to, to let them know how much you appreciate the things they do for you. So right now, I have no idea why I chose March the 1st, 2009, but we are going back just a little bit, and we're going to see who the guest was that day. When we get to this, I bet you it hits me, because quite often I'll go back and in my mind I'll think, man, that was a day that was hard to get to. That was a day that was easy to get through. That was a great guest. That was a fun guest. That guest lifted me up. Right. And, and there have been so many of you, um, as I was looking through the couples who've made a difference in my life. Carl, Ed, and Laura came to my mind. Mm -hmm. Nowhere have I ever seen such a more precious couple. Well, Carl, Ed's gone now. Right. And I think about Laura all the time. And I think about she had this amazing life with this amazing man for 60-some years. Mm -hmm. You know, think about it. Now, he's gone, and she has to go on. So remember um, Joe and Brenda Rufert. Remember the ladies who were left behind. Remember the guys who were left behind. And as we approach Father's Day, daughters, if you're sitting out there, and your dad, your mom may have passed on. I know one. I know Miss Sarah Beth will be with her daddy David this weekend because she's that kind of girl. Yeah. You know, she's that kind of girl. So do something special for somebody you love and let them know you love them. Right now, I really have no idea who the guest is on March the 1st, 2009, but in just a second, we're going to find out. Yesterday, um, I'd been crashing. It'd been a rough, rough week. Now, you're involved in something that is um, designed to lift people's spirits. And so that's why I figured I needed y'all here today. You're involved in ACES, which is Appalachian Children's Emergency Shelter? That's yes. correct. Okay, let's talk a little bit about it sitting dormant waiting on what? State licenses. Okay. Um, the building's been ready. The community, a uh, little uncertain as to what's going on. We do like to put out, you know, uh, news reports. Um, that we are waiting for the licenses, but we do not want donations to stop uh -huh. because we are debt free. Uh -huh. And because of that, um, we continuously will need money, especially once the children come. We need donations of food, uh, we need donations of toys, uh, clothing. That's a, we'll, that will always be an ongoing situation. Uh -huh. But um, we're waiting for the state. The state has slowed down um, due to the economy, due to a new president. Uh -huh. But um, but if you're funded, you're ready, all it takes is somebody coming and looking at it, doesn't it? I mean, uh, the, the, the state, it's, it's in different processes. Uh, the stages, it's like stage A through D. And so we are probably at C waiting for the final. Gosh, I would get discouraged. Y'all are more positive we're, we're than not, me. We're not discouraged. Huh. Um, you just have to have the patience and the understanding yeah. that the state does take a long time. You, yeah. you made a lot of D's, didn't you? <laughs> a lot of D's. <laughs> no, I made F in biology, and I'm admitting that on live TV. <laughs> why, would, uh, why would kids come to where y'all, what y'all are doing? What, what um, kind of kids, kids do you Kids do not come to us. Um, most of the children that will come to us will be children who have 
been removed from the home for different situations. Mm -hmm. Let's say uh, an officer is called to your home during the middle of the night due to the parents having a domestic situation or a drug problem. And there, you know, there's only so many foster homes in Pickens County. And they will need to go somewhere for the night. Right. At this point in time, some children are going to motels and staying with a male and a female because of, there is a lack of the proper housing for children in emergency situations. Mm -hmm. So they would come to ACES. Um, even if there was an automobile accident on the interstate and they needed some place to hold a child until a parent or another relative could come, then uh -huh. that could be a situation also. But this was actually um, born through um, the dream and the needs that Brenda, Judge Brenda Weaver, saw that Pickens County needed. And this has been ongoing since 2006. But when you take on a, a project like this, you do not want the debt with it. Uh -huh. right. So they, the land was donated, the building started, and then everything from that moment on was a donation of time, love, tender care. Uh -huh. um, my church and Ruben's church very involved in bringing people in to do a lot of the um, groundwork, sheet rocking, putting in the windows, putting in the tile floors, doing the painting. Mm -hmm. And so all this labor was labor of love and it was free. So now we're just sitting with everything so perfect and so ready and beautiful. <coughs> I know you even have it decorated. It's already yes. ready with volunteers, beds and everything. Volunteers are vital for the success of the shelter mm -hmm. because that's who really is ultimately going to be mm -hmm. its backbone are the volunteers right. and that's right. an ongoing. We're looking for people who are willing to volunteer in this, in this endeavor mm -hmm. and the children can be housed from one day up to 90 days mm -hmm. while the state decides where to place them. Usually they are placed back with family members once they have an opportunity to investigate and see where the child could be cared for within their own families. Now during the time, once you get children, and we're going to say once you get children, because this has got to finalize. It's got it, to And open. it will finalize. It's got to. It will. Once you get children, will you have like a volunteer per night, a male and a female, in case you have both? You, you will have staff. You will have an executive director and you will have at least two staff. Volunteers must go through a um, volunteer program and certification. The state does not allow just anyone to walk in and be a volunteer and stay with children. Of course, there would be, you know, first day CPR training. Uh, okay, a reintroduction to two of my very favorite guests. Yeah. Um, Ruth Ann Eaton takes care of her mother every day mm -hmm. who is battling Alzheimer's. Her mother quite possibly maybe should be in a nursing home, but not in Ruth Ann's eyes. Yep. She has stepped up to the plate and she is taking care of her mom 24 seven. Those ladies, um, Cheryl is very, very involved in the Appalachian Children's Shelter and she had asked us about being on the board and we said mm -hmm. we would volunteer anything we can other than we, we don't have that time to right. give. Right. But we'll be willing to help any way we can. Those are two ladies who give back every single day. Mm -hmm. Now, um, to have to care for your mom, um, I know when my grandmother got to the end and, and she didn't remember that I had just been to see her, when she didn't know that it was summer instead of winter, when, um, you know, that's very, very hard. And right. so when I met Ruth Ann, I was very, very impressed with the idea that she, I think she has two sisters, but she chose to be the one to take care of her mom. Now, if you're doing that, you're a very special person because it takes somebody very, very special. Right. I made a comment the other day about um, being in a room with child molesters. I don't know that I can handle that. Tomorrow we're going to have a lady on who is a counselor. She has counseled many, many people. She has counseled drug addicts. She has counseled um, marriage counseling. She has done grief counseling. She has done any kind of counseling you can imagine. And I asked her, I said, do you take that home with you? Does that worry you? Do you think about that? She said, yeah, quite often you do. But you're, you're trained to leave it at work. Right. Tomorrow you'll get to meet a very special lady who will be with our guest. Um, he left home at 14 years old. I left home at 15. Um, that's one part of the book that will not be disclosed ever because I took it out. I wrote it and then I took it out and decided not to talk about why I left home mm -hmm. at 15. If you faced a tragedy, if you faced something really, really 
critical in your life and you have to get over it, I think tomorrow's show will um, inspire you to move on. Mm -hmm. To move on. Because this lady is going to share what it takes to get out of, you can't do anything about yesterday. You have to live for today and hope for tomorrow. Right. And I think that's going to be, uh, I think tomorrow's going to be a good day. I think it's going to be a day that begins to lift us again because the last counselor we had on, the emails came in like crazy. The phones rang off the hook. I had so many stories shared with me. So many stories that to, honestly to me were very sad mm -hmm. and very depressing. And I got to thinking, how does a counselor handle this? Right. When you hear this every day and you know that a little child's life has been changed forever because... I hate to say this because of a dirty old man, but it's the truth, right. you know, or because of something that happened. I wonder how does a counselor deal with that? So tomorrow, maybe we'll interview the counselor. I don't know how her. you would leave that at work either, either because you either. know that'd always be on your mind. I don't either. Now you've got some revivals to talk about. I do. Um, revivals are, of course, are started in this area, and I've got a lot for uh, the second week in June. Uh, Mount Carmel, uh, Mount Zion here in LJ, New Liberty. Pleasant Hill, Wallace Road. So that's one, two, three, four, five churches. So there's plenty of places everybody could go this week to revival. So try to get by some of those and support them and be sure and, and pray for Pleasant them. Is Pleasant Hill in Jasper? Yes. It, it was yeah. packed last night. It mm -hmm. was packed. Okay, I've got some birthdays. Mr. Matthew Waters, happy, happy birthday. 26 years old from Aunt Hazel, or from Hazel and Sharon Townsend. And happy anniversary to Ralph and Esther Pinion. And happy anniversary to Matthew and Katie Waters. Uh, it's so funny, they've been married three years, it seems like yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. And to Carlissa Finley, happy, happy birthday from Roger. What's that one? I can't read that. I can't either. McKenna and... Kesslin? Maybe, maybe. I don't know. And Shade. And Shade. I know it's Shade. Kesslin. Okay, we got it right. What a cool name. What a cool name. And happy, happy birthday to Debbie Starks from Tim, Jordan, and Kara. Happy birthday to each of you. You know you will go in the birthday drawing. And on Friday, as always, we will draw for a cake. Compliments of one of the many bakeries in our area. Now, we have something queued up. Um, we've talked a little bit about cancer about every day because it's affected every single one of us. And um, Angela Barker sang a song in Jasper a few years ago at a friendraiser and a fundraiser mm -hmm. for Hans Ruford. Brought the house down. She had, to, she had a standing ovation. She had to do it twice. When she steps up to sing this song today, it means more than it ever has. Mm -hmm. Her father is battling cancer. Her mom and dad are a very, very close couple. When you talk about couples who've been together a long time, and done it right. Nobody any better than Angela Barker's mom and dad. So right now we're going to go to Angela Barker and her family singing Family Chain for you. to me. 
her back. Okay, she did get a standing ovation and she had to do that song again. Yeah, she did. It is a song that touches many, many families. Um, it, it is strange how we have all faced this. We've all seen this. I was thinking about, I looked at the calendar and I saw your Aunt Jewel's pound cake. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about your Aunt Jewel? Mm -hmm. I guess I remember the most her and Uncle Vernie, and it's funny you said that. What I remember him because he used to wear the hats. We were talking, had the people on the uh -huh, show last uh -huh. week, and I always wanted to get that hat. Uh -huh. And he always had a pocket watch in his overalls, uh -huh. and he always let me play with the pocket watch. So I guess that's what I remember the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, today's program is about memories. Um, I have so many great memories over the past three years. I looked back as I was going through the DVDs, and I thought about the amazing people I've been honored to meet, to spend time with, to get to know. And Ernest and Betty Gibbs are two of those. Um, mm -hmm. I want to say today, please continue to pray for Ernest. He is one cool dude. Now, he worked at the company and um, spent a lot of years giving back uh, to his family. He worked down in... Um, you know, 20 some odd years, I think he said. Mm -hmm. and, and he had a lot of memories, and I hope that he will be featured on the Miner Special. I'm not sure if he has been or not. Mm -hmm. But he is one of those guys, when I sat and talked to him at the community meal, he talked about the company and what it meant to his family. Mm -hmm. And um, he and Betty have been married 11 years now. It is not their first marriage, but it is truly one of those, they got it right. Mm -hmm. They got it right. Yeah. And uh, he, is, he is very good to her, and I appreciate them as friends. And I want to say good morning to them, and, and please continue to pray for them. He is in Blairsville in the hospital, um, a blood clot, some kidney failure, some mm -hmm. different things going on. But if you've been to the community meal, you've met Ernest Gibbs, and today please pray for them. Right now we're going to go to a man I met who said I wouldn't have liked him if I met him five years yeah. ago. Now, y'all have all seen Dan Elliott, and you know the family. He, he's, he's part of the Elliott family. Now think about it, he told me, he said, Sherry, if you met me five years ago, you wouldn't have liked me. I've learned something about life, timing is everything. Mm -hmm. It is all predestined, it is all preplanned. Some things have happened to me lately, just like this magazine. I was in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. So many things have happened that now I do not question what happens. Right. I know that it is in God's plan. I don't understand a lot of it, but I right. don't question it because I know that it is meant to be. <clears throat> Dan Elliott, I had his phone number for a year and a half, and I called him, and I called him, and I called him. Four or five times, I called him. Well, he didn't return my calls, and I thought, <laughs> <laughs> well. I said, that's it, big boy. Well, we walked up on each other at a racetrack. There was a fence separating us. And within two seconds, he came around the fence and said, I'm sorry I didn't call you back. And we have been the best of friends ever since. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this week on Sunday, it's Father's Day. And on Saturday, there's a big race at Gresham. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that. <clears throat> but we're going to get my throat cleared first. But there's a big race at Gresham. If you don't have anything planned for Saturday, take your daddy to Gresham Motorsports Park. It is a great value. It is a beautiful facility, great seating, and get to know a little bit about the Elliott family. Dan spent a year getting this track ready. He is a great Christian man. He has been married for 20 some odd years to a beautiful lady. Lottie is just gorgeous. And um, Daniel and Sheena, his children, are special, special kids. They grew up in the racing world. They saw their dad at his very, very best. He told me, he said, I wasn't a really nice guy. Today he is one of the best, and I encourage you to support and to get to know Gresham Motorsports Park. We're going to go right now to just some footage that we shot over there. Either I shot it or Tyler Spear shot it. I'm not sure who. But we're going to show you a little bit of Gresham Motorsports Park, and I encourage you this Saturday, if your daddy likes racing, you can buy him a ticket at a bargain price and take him to Gresham Motorsports Park. Let's go right now to the park, and, and maybe we'll entice you.
biggity, biggity, biggity. <laughs> that is racing. That is in Jefferson, Georgia, which is just a couple hours away. If you don't have plans for Saturday, try to check out that track and, and take your family. They have great concession stands. You can tailgate. You can do whatever you want to as far as food goes. You can take yourself a jar of peanut butter and a loaf of bread. But it is um, great family entertainment. Dan Elliott has been a big part of the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. He has spent a lot of time with us. And it is funny because when I met him, I was a little bit put off with him because I'll call you and I'll ask you. And if you don't call me back. <laughs> you go on the list. <laughs> <laughs> you do. On the list. And, and so when, when we walked up to each other at the track, I just kind of said, look, I gave you a shot and you didn't call me back. He said, I'm sorry. You know, and so we became good, good friends. He's a good guy, and he gives back to his mm -hmm. community. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that's one of the things I really, really like about him. Today, I, t I chose programs that feature people that I really, really like. Um, I chose a couple with you because you and I, we looked at something, I think Monday, and we realized it was before Charlene. So we now refer oh. to things as BC, before Charlene or oh, after gosh. Charlene. <laughs> well, so, gee. So, you know, before Christ, after Christ, whatever. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Oh, Lord, let's got, don't go there. We got before Charlene. So you didn't come on the program for about a year, mm -hmm. is that right? Yep. And then Bill needed a day off. Yeah. And he called me and he said, hey, I have this idea. And I said, well, yeah, that'll be fine. I've known her since she was a little big kid. That'll be great. And he said, you sure you're okay with this? I said, sure, I'm okay with this. Well, quickly, you became the bubbly one. That's me. And we will <laughs> disclose that in the last year, the bubbles have gone down. We have all had a tough, tough year. Yeah, that's true. And emotionally, it has been a tough time. Um, the counselor who comes on tomorrow, I hope, will, will give us a little bit of light. When you're on top of the mountain and all of a sudden you're down in the valley, how do you deal with that? How do you handle that? You and I have done a lot of praying and a lot of singing. A lot of praying. A lot, a lot of, of praying. praying. Yeah, and the singing, you know, the singing help, and that, that's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And and there are days <clears throat> we have both faced the audience um, thinking, wow, I'd rather be in bed with the pillow over my head and not be here. But it is our opportunity to reach people. Mm -hmm. And we have been very, very blessed with that. You get to do it more than any of us because you are in the public eye more than the rest of us because you're in the store. Right. And you have hundreds of people a week who come in that store and quite often they will come over and share a story with you. A lot of stories. A, a lot, lot of stories. Of stories. Now, mm -hmm. now there's a lady who shops in your store about every Saturday night and her name's Loretta Brackett. Yes, love Loretta. Love Loretta. And um, this week on Father's Day, I hope that we get to on Saturday, spend a little bit of time taking Eddie and Loretta somewhere that really means a lot to him. These are very, very special people. They, they were your customers because before they were my friends. I uh, have learned a lot about living through them. Mm -hmm. They have a very, very simple life. They have a very positive life. They love their family. Yeah. They are so, so close. And I said, it's been an honor to spend the last year and a half getting to know them. This Saturday, we hope to do something special for Dad, for mm -hmm. Eddie, to, to take him somewhere and see somebody he really wants to see. It's a cousin coming up from Miami. That's a big to-do. Yeah. It's a long drive and it's a big to-do, but the man who's going to do that has also makes me smile, makes me laugh, makes me mm. crazy some days because he's like very focused, very structured, and I'm not, y'all, think about it. I'm just not, you know. Mm. I'm kind of fly by the seat of my pants. But now we have logged over 20,000 miles wow. of Freddie Brackett <laughs> driving me. Now you think about it, that's 20,000 miles. That's a lot. That's a lot of miles. We've gone a lot of places, and it's like yesterday when we left and drove 350 miles. He just drives, and I just ride. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So I chose a couple of programs to go back to. These feature Freddie Brackett. Um, he was an unlikely co-host. He was not somebody that would ever have been on television because he's very quiet, very bashful. But he's also very funny, and he can get me. I get tickled him. <laughs> I listen to him talk about being a co-host. That they ain't no need for me to be sitting there. That's y'all's job. I said, Freddie, you do such a good job. He does. Yeah. And we have heard so many positive comments. I decided today people want to know why is it not Freddie Friday? Well, Freddie has got this head stuff going on, sinuses, allergies, or yeah. whatever. But we're waiting on the doctor to call in a ZPAC. He's had this for about ten days now. Yeah. 
And I think it might be from cutting them three yards he cut. I don't know. You don't know? But I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, um, he hopefully will be back in the near future. Until then, you're going to get your Freddie fix right now. You're going to get to see. Somebody sent me a, a message the other day, and they said, make him sing. Uh-uh, you don't make him do anything. <laughs> you ask him to sing because he sings very well. But you're going to get to see one of the days that he came on and co-host. He brought me Tyler Spear. He mm -hmm. brought me, um, yeah. what's his name, Danny Nelson. He brought um, a couple of other guests, and it's funny because he has seen Gene Watson in person. I never have. Now yeah. we have the opportunity. We're going to interview Gene Watson and have him on the show. If you know about Gene Watson's music, on the CD we have, he looks very young. He's not anymore. <laughs> He's not anymore, but we're going to get the opportunity. Freddie opened my eyes to a lot of things that I never even looked at. You know, mm -hmm. I never even thought about. So um, today, we're going to honor my very favorite co-host, Freddie Friday. And right now, let's go to just a little clip with Freddie, and I'm not sure who's on this one. So much, you can't even name it all. You can't even so name much, it all. So, like the song said that Harmony, you heard a while ago, so much to thank him for. That's right. Well, we are looking at four people sitting here, Charlene, Angela, Sheena. You couldn't make it, Dad, you couldn't make it without her. I know I you're couldn't. thankful for her. I know much. you are. And we're so thankful for your friendship. Thank you for being here today. Angela wanted to come because you're here. Of course. <laughs> That's it. You are a little shaky today, a little, a little, and Charlene drove you. Thank you, thank you, thank That's you. That's probably why she's shaky. Yeah, because Charlene <laughs> drove me. Hey, I'm going to be a race car driver. <laughs> I got to go in the navigator in the, and you know, okay, I'm on paid medication, but the the running boards go in, so we, we got out here, and the door shuts, and all of a sudden, it's like, mm, and I was like, cool. You thought you was in the motor home for a second, and then you were the steps that go in. Now, you were at the race in Atlanta. You and Sheena hung out yes, together, and y'all yes. had a good time. Sheena and I, gave me one of those super cool t-shirts. You had on yes. that t-shirt on some pictures on Facebook, didn't you? Yeah, actually, I think maybe. Yeah, but something's wrong with this picture because Mom never got hers. I never got yeah. my shirt. <laughs> it's in my car. Well, Sheena asked me this morning. I, she said, "Did I've you been get your shirt?" <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Now that shirt is the coolest statement, and yeah. and, and it took, uh, you know, it took a woman's touch to make it exactly. Yeah, you see the cap. Do. She's doing it on a cap, and okay. I think I think the cap is awesome. I really do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cute. That's mm -hmm. neat. So. That's neat. Mm -hmm. Okay, are we on track for opening? I know the rain. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> so when is opening date? Opening date is still the same. We got our open house on November the seventh, but the race is November thirteenth, fourteenth, and fifteenth, and we're going to have a race. We had a tire That's test hard. yesterday. Mm -hmm trying to determine what tires are going to run on the late models and uh, pretty good test. We still didn't get to determine. We're going to have another open test first of the week, but um, we're going to cut it close. But I uh, put chicken letter down about two weeks ago before the rains came. Mm -hmm. We have got green grass. Oh, I, I bet we do. <laughs> I bet we do. We have got green grass. Now, Angela wants to start racing. Once she recovers She's got to come there first. Yes. She'll be fine. Uh -huh. Stay medicated. You'll yeah. be fine. <laughs> she wants a purple car. She yeah. wants a purple yeah. car. Now, that, that the running boards go out yeah, there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And, and we have to say thank you because people brought you gifts. And, and we were just talking about Lisa Savage took the time to put it in a purple bag because mm -hmm. purple is your your favorite color, but today we are wearing signature pink and black. You've got mm -hmm. on pink and black, Charlene does. We decided that we want to give a positive lift to every single woman who has ever faced what you faced at 39. Um, kind of. Did you just say 39? <gasps> oh, I meant 29. <laughs> kind of like a slap in the face. No, really, I mean, yeah. I, when he told me, and I'm like, I'm 30. I'm in, you know, I just never imagined. No, no. But I know it hits women younger than me, so. That's right. I had a, have a friend who had a total hysterectomy due to cancer uh, when she was in her early 20s, I believe. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. a lot of women do. Yeah. But the whole key to this is we are now progressing toward every step of getting you well. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about because you said the motor home, we're all going to be at his track the day it opens. We're all going to yes. be positive. We we're all going to be positive for you and yes. all the other people that are going through That's this. Right. And uh, you're going to beat it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This is a time that things are um, 
medical technology is better than it's ever been. Yeah. Well, Aunt Betty's yeah. a perfect example. Yeah. She's a yeah. nine-year survivor, and she's doing great. She's at Disney World. We could be with Mickey Mouse with Aunt Betty, and instead, here we sit, you know? Well, this Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, how much does Bill send your pay? <laughs> Thank he you, Bill super. and Melissa, for cutting my grass the other day. Yeah. And and how many thank yous? Can, is there any way you can say enough? No. And and I also wanted to say, too, before I say thank yous, um, Dr. Monica was saying, I'm right, Dr. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. She was saying, you know, how important it is to get your pap. Okay. I am regular on my paps because I've always had issues. Uh-huh. My last pap was only a year and a half ago. Right. And whatever I have, um, when we first, you know, found it, it's aggressive. Right. Because there's too much in that time frame. So I cannot stress enough. You know, I stretched it to a year and a half. The main reason I stretched it to a year and a half is because I knew something was wrong with me. And I was too afraid to go. Uh -huh. So I stretched out that six months. But go let your fears. to the yeah. doctor. I mean, I don't want to go to, the, I, I didn't want to go to surgery on Monday. And I was actually 10 minutes late. And she was. Miss Brenda was. Ruford is sitting there. And my sister Jean and I'm like, I didn't want to go. You know, and Chad's like, we got to go. We got to go. And I, I was like, I don't want to go. I don't want to know anymore. Okay, there you go. That has been almost a year. Mm -hmm. She has recovered from three surgeries. She is doing well. The girl was in a tent last week camping. Now think about it. You gotta be pretty healthy to be in a tent she camping. She sent me a picture of that. <laughs> I am sorry, those girls are not mine. I don't know. You know, I brought home the babies that the nurses handed me, but neither one of those girls, they both <laughs> like to camp. They like to camp. They, uh, one of them likes to hunt and fish, and one of them gardens. You know, think about it. Are you sure those babies are mine? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but Angela is doing better. And I want to say thank you to the folks who called concerned about, you know, she did, um, I hated that she had reduced herself to out picking up aluminum cans. Mm -hmm. But she would go out and pick up aluminum cans and it was her way of making gas money. And yep. she had done that over the last three months. She had huge amounts of cans. And to the culprit who stole them, shame on you. Shame mm. on you because somebody stole them over the weekend yeah. and cashed them in um, at the recycling place and got the money. Well, Angela bounced back from that and she said, Mom, I'll be fine. Well, I've already collected her another bag full. Yeah, so, you know, she, um, she bounced back. And I said, I'm, I'm very happy that she was able to do that yeah. because she got... Were you a little worried about her emotionally? Oh, yeah. Worried about her all the way around. Yeah. Yeah. We, we saw the physical strain it took on her and the financial strain, but then the emotional thing. And, and I want to ask the counselor about that tomorrow. When you get that diagnosis, how do you stay positive and how do you stay pumped up? Because I'm not sure. You I'm know, not sure I, don't, I don't know. But I know that Angela took a hard, hard hit, and, and I was worried. I was more concerned emotionally than anything. Yeah. So tomorrow will be the day we'll talk about things like that. Now, we've got uh, another prayer request. Florine the Four, pray for her. She had two strokes and can't do anything for herself. Right. So please pray for her. If you have prayer requests, you can call us at 866-939-2329. Have you got something going on with radio? I do. Jasper Radio Club is having their field day at Newton Park in Jasper, Saturday, June the 26th from 1030 to 4. Um, for further information, Frank Dean is the president. You can uh, email him at kfd455 at yahoo.com. There you go. And, and did you get something? I, I sent an email in about Mark Hellinger. Have you got that? Yeah. You yep. want to talk about that a little bit? Because for y'all who know, first time I ever laid eyes on Pretty Brackett was at WYYZ. Um, we had, I had my building here and they were right next door. And quite often I was over there because I was a big promoter of that radio station. Good folks and, and good people. And that's where I met Mark Hellinger. Mm -hmm. He was then not the man he is today. The man has gone. I've never seen a physical toll on anybody like this uh, poor guy has taken. Can you read what he wrote us? Yeah, it says, um, greetings. I'm still among the living. I went to DeKalb Medical Center last Monday for severe pain on my right side. They put me in urgent care, called my doctor, and ran a battery of tests, blood tests, x-rays, CAT scan, and a scope down into my stomach, and they feared possible bone cancer, so they did a bone scan. Thank God it wasn't cancer. However, there are a number of things that need attention. I was on my back for six days. I had IVs in my right arm and blood drawn from my left arm. I feel like a pin cushion. They injected me many times in my stomach. So much so, my stomach is black and blue. I was continuously fed morphine. My blood pressure was extremely low. I hadn't eaten in eight days. 
I still don't have an appetite. I've lost 20 pounds in two weeks. My bone density is very low. My severe osteoporosis just got worse. I have a severe ulcer. Still, they haven't been able to find the source of the pain. I still am in pain. I have to go back down to DeKalb Medical Center next week. DeKalb is about 70 miles away, just east of, excuse me, of Atlanta. I want to thank you for your thoughts and prayers. They really do help. Special thanks to my wonderful staff at WIVL 88.3 FM radio station. I understand our streaming audio is down. We've got great people working on the problem. I hope you can tune in to us soon. God bless. Mark Hellinger. Um, please continue to pray for him. He is down to a mere shell of a man. Yeah. He really is. Now we're going to go back to our last clip of the day. This is not a shell of a man. It's a big old, big old six foot something or another, Freddie Brackett. And this is the day Tyler Spear and Freddie kind of dressed alike. It was so funny. Freddie had never worn a black shirt with a black sport coat. And I said that day, I think this will look nice on you. Mm. Tyler walked in with the same outfit. It was hysterical. So right now, <laughs> We're going to go to the last clip of the day, and this is Freddie and Tyler. Remember, Freddie found Tyler in a newspaper and set up mm -hmm. the interview with him, and Tyler has also become one of our dearest friends. The cutest, the fastest, the best driver in NASCAR history, right? Is that Tyler Spear? Hey, the one and only. The one and only. Does that describe this kid? It does. You're going to be racing next week in Hickory, North Carolina. Yes, ma'am. We want to come and see you race. How long does it take to get to Hickory? It takes about four hours, roughly. Four. Could we do that? You can do Could that. Could we handle yeah. that? I'm I sure think we you, can. How far is it from here to Loretta's? Yes, about I think we can hours. handle it. I'm Tyler. sure you can shave it down to like three and 30 minutes. We're going to try to make a <laughs> commitment to come and see you race. Now, we've seen footage of you racing. Um, the coolest thing we liked about you, Freddie actually found you from a Cherokee County newspaper article. And last night, we were talking about another article in the paper about a couple who had a Chevelle years and years ago. Mm -hmm. And we said it's amazing how stories in the paper end up being on television because he just caught a little glimpse of your article, called me and said, you need to meet this kid. Well, we've been hanging out ever since. <laughs> and, and we have become your biggest fans. She's your number one fan. So Angela's normally the co-host on Friday, but because for the next two Fridays, it is Freddy Friday, because Freddy's going to be gone. He's going to be out of here for a while. The next two Fridays. <laughs> yeah, this Friday, next Friday. This I Friday. Didn't, I didn't know about anything. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> now you do. <laughs> and 80,000 other people do. <laughs> but we just decided it's fun to have us together as a group. Mm -hmm. You and I can get along, talk about anything. He, you can talk about anything. So, But we wanted to talk about the idea that he just found you out of the Cherokee County newspaper. Have other people just called you and said we saw you and thought you looked interesting? Um, I haven't had anybody call like that before. I'm, Were you surprised when he called? I was. I really was. <laughs> And you kind of called me and said, hey, I have this idea. And I said, okay, let's try it. And you know what, too? Um, Chad buys fuel uh -huh. on his go-kart. Uh -huh. Where does he buy the fuel? From them. I know. So <laughs> last week he came in and he said, um, I've got to go get my fuel. And I said, okay. So he comes in and he says, I met somebody that knows y'all. <laughs> and he, you know, he's a man. He didn't finish the story and let me know. But I didn't realize it was Tyler and his mom uh -huh. that Chad was getting the fuel from. And then yeah. Ch uh, Ch Tyler's mom told me that it was them. And so I'm like, small world, It you is know? a small world. Yeah. Now let's talk about the fuel. Is the fuel that Nick runs the same fuel you run in your cars? The Allison cars, we have to run spec fuel just to try to make them closer together on, on power-wise. Uh -huh. But for, like, the VP stuff for the Chevelle, we run 113. I'm not sure what he runs in the, or what he's going to run in the dirt car. Right. <laughs> he's so happy to be back on dirt. And I'm so sad. Tyler, I wanted him to stay in asphalt. I did, and I begged and pleaded and kicked and cried, didn't I? I got obnoxious about it a little bit. Yeah, but I said, if that's what he wants to do, that's what he needs to do. Right. He kept telling me, he said, listen, let him make the decision. I said, but I'm the one sitting out there in the dirt. I'm the one that comes home and can plant corn in my hair because there's a whole yeah. lot of dirt. Chad's wanting to go to Dixie this weekend. Is there a race at Dixie this weekend? Do I'm you know? sure there is. There's one just about every yeah. Saturday yeah. night. And yeah. so, so last night, because go-karting at Chatsworth is off this weekend, he's uh -huh. like, let's go to Dixie Saturday. And I'm like, okay. Okay, dirt, dirt. <laughs> it's a mess. Now, you went to Dixie to kind of check out things and see what's going on for Nick because he's moving to that type car. Tell me what type car. All we know is he called and said, y'all, I'm coming home with this new car. I want you to see it. I want you to see it. Did he tell us there was no engine in it? 
No. <laughs> no. And the engine is highly expensive. Yeah. yeah. So, so Tyler's going to help him. You're going to put him an engine in. Yeah, we have a motor for. It probably won't be that competitive. That's but, fine. We don't want it just, to be that competitive <laughs> at first. <laughs> but it's it's a good practice motor. Uh -huh. We ran it in the. Okay. Yeah. Now you got to see y'all. I have to admit it. He is my favorite co-host. Yeah, of course. <laughs> he is my favorite co-host. He's he's funny. He's very dry-witted. He's. I never know what is going to happen, but mm -hmm. he, he has made a big difference in, in just taking me places, doing things that I never was, I, I never got to do. So I want to say thank you today. Uh, that little trip yesterday, 350 miles, and that was my daycation. Yeah. So, well, we're welcoming a man who has a little something to do with singing, and we've got to move fast because we're going to talk about singing in the mountains. Yes, we desperately need choir members. Yes, ma'am. We are uh, trying to get about an 80-member choir. Uh -huh. is our goal and we'll take as many as up to 100 you know as many as we can get on the stage uh -huh. um, so if you're out there and you swing, sing we would love to have you come be a part of our choir for singing in the mountains now why do you think that every year you've been packed what's happening what's going on i don't know if vacation times or what it is but we've not had a lot of people commit this year to being a part of it for uh -huh. some reason uh -huh. they've uh and is this the seventh year? Eighth year. Eighth, eighth year. annual okay. singing in the mountains. And it's at the Performing Arts Center. We have, uh -huh. I believe, eight special groups that are coming to be with us that night. It's a normally pack out the facility at the Performing Arts Center. Oh, it's Arts amazing, Center. yeah. Have about a thousand people there. ETC is a big help with the Absolutely. With the singing. We'll be there motor home front and center. All right. We'll be doing Great. a little meet and greet. Great. That'll be fun. And it you always can sing is. in the choir. No, I cannot, honey. You've never heard me <laughs> sing. You do not want me in the choir. We'd love to have you. <laughs> no, I promise you, you wouldn't. But for folks who can sing, sure. now, who do they call? They can contact me, and my number is 706-492-9960. And uh, you can contact me and let me know, and I can get you a list of the songs. And the only commitment that you need to make now is the date of the singing, okay. which is July 10th. Okay. And we need you to be at the Performing Arts Center at 3.30. Uh, to, for a practice, and we'll practice for about an hour, and it's the good old-fashioned right. songs, the good old-fashioned hymns. And thank uh, goodness, it's like church used to be that's before exactly the contemporary right. stuff that's took it. over. Now, um, how long does this event last? An it hour usually lasts about two hours. Two hours. Two okay. hours, and. Uh, It'll be a jam-packed event of, of good toe-tapping Southern Gospel. Oh, yeah. And then there's some contemporary newer little stuff bit, thrown yeah, in there. Um, we actually have a concert pianist coming from uh, uh, Marietta, Georgia, Greg Hallett, who is a tremendous talent. Uh -huh. he, uh, he is a very talented piano player. Uh -huh. He'll be there with us that night as well. Well, we're going to have to do something we never do here. We got you in and we got you out and we got your message That'll across, work. and that was good. <laughs> we that appreciate y'all doing that. But once again, if you'd like to be involved in Singing in the Mountains, please get in touch with these guys. You can call Eric, Patrick, you Ryan. know. Ryan, anytime, folks, if you, you don't have to be professional, just sing. That's Not right. like me, just sing. Charlene, you could sing. Uh, no, 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 I can't. <laughs> there we go. Well, we're going to do something we never do. We never say goodbye. We always say we'll see you later. From North Georgia Now Today, I'm Sherry Martin. And I'm Charlene Higgins, and we don't like to say goodbye, so we'll say have a great day today and a better day tomorrow. And after today's start, you're lucky we made it to the finish. <laughs> Hey, I got to open this morning. <laughs> That's right. You be with us, and we will be back again in the morning, as always, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 10 a.m., 6 to 7.30 p.m., and 1 to 2.30 for you late-nighters. You be here, and we'll be here, too, only on ETC3. That could not be